Well, hi crafty friends of Facebook and YouTube. It's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. And on this video, we are gonna talk about the color orange. I'm gonna show you a bunch of projects that I've done with orange as the focus. And I'm gonna show you some things that I'm thinking ahead to this upcoming fall uh, that concern orange. So, how's everyone doing? Are you having a good day? I hope so. If you're watching on Facebook as you're hopping on, say hi to me. Uh, I'd love to know that you're watching. Um, feel free to ask questions. Let's see, feel free to sprinkle if you would like to. If you're watching this on YouTube, same, same all of those things. Um, anyways, okay, so, if you've been watching DIY Dreaming for very long, you know that last Easter, the year before, that I was having a ton of fun with orange and carrots. And I wanna show you some of the projects that I did with that theme. So I'm thinking coming up to fall, which I know it's not, we're not quite fall yet, but it's fun to sometimes think ahead um, that I want to do something similar and I have some ideas to share with you. So stay with me because they're really cool. But before we do that, let me show you some of the things that I did uh, for Easter the year before last and last year. Okay, so one thing we did, which was fun here at DIY Dreaming, is I showed you guys many different styles of, I call these candle garters. But this was the orange version, and it has burlap, it has a vintage dictionary, a vintage button, and some of this amazing orange fabric that I've only found once, and I had a very small piece of it, and I used every single scrap. I absolutely love this. So this fabric right here is what started me thinking, hmm, Let's make our own fabric with that idea. So this, this was the candle garters that we made. And then last, I um, have some things from fall, but I want to show you my Easter stuff first. Okay, so two years ago at Easter, I made these adorable wrapped fabric there's a paper towel tube that's scrunched inside of these for Easter. Um, last year, I made these little guys here for Easter. And we made the fabric using the uh, Victorian lace stencil and some orange ink from Magnolia, which I'll put links in, the, in this video in just a few minutes. Okay, the year before last, I made this adorable banner. You guys know that I love making banners. It's one of my favorite things. And these were just stuffed little carrots that I put on a kind of a cardboard banner from a craft store. I don't even remember which one it was. And it looked so adorable hanging on my mantle. So that was another thing. And last year at Easter, I made a ton of different um, table runners. This was one of them. I made three different ones, three or four different ones, and I gave most of those away. This was the one that I kept for my house. And there's some of your little carrots with the fabric that we created here at DIY Dreaming. Let me just come closer so you can see. This was absolutely adorable. So start the creative juices flowing in your mind how we could take this idea and recreate it with a fall theme of orange. So this right here is painter's drop cloth. It's from Walmart. Not, it's not, excuse me, it's not painter's drop cloth. This is canvas duck fabric from Walmart. It, um, you buy it on, off the bolt. It's around five, six dollars a yard. It's super nice to work with. It frays great. You do not wash it before you work with it. Um, and I had so much fun making all of these adorable table runners 
with the fabric that we made here at DIY Dreaming using the Victorian pattern stencil and some orange ink. So that was another, um, that was last year. So I've showed you these guys and I showed you the carrot banner. Um, okay, so then for fall last year, I at that point was completely obsessed with the Magnolia Mandela lace stencil and still the orange ink, which is awesome. And this was one of the banners, ooh, it's been packed away. Let me just remove these stringy, fluffy things. This was the banner that I made for my mantle that says family, and it has the Mandela lace stencil on it. This is just one of these inexpensive, fabric banners that you can get made, that you can get that are already made from Walmart. And I just stenciled it with the Mandela lace and the orange ink. And then I put um, the word family on there and I put a pumpkin in the center. And these are some strings out of our orange burlap pulled string uh, flowers that we made. Okay, um, also last year I made this cute little pouch with that same orange ink from Magnolia and, and uh, the stencil that says blessed was super cute. And we did a lot of pillows. I, I love pillows. I don't know how many pillows is too many, but I definitely have too many pillows. Whatever that number is, I for sure have way too many. Anyways, so last uh, fall I was obsessed with this Mandela lace stencil, and I made, this is one of the Magnolia pillow forms, uh, pillow cases, um, you get two in a set. I made this using that orange ink, and I made this um, lumber pillow with the Mandela lace and the stencil that will hopefully be coming back this fall that says, grateful, thankful, blessed. Look how cute that is. It looked so adorable for fall. Um, one last thing I wanna show you, well, two last things I wanna show you, and then I wanna talk and show you what we can do. Um, another thing I showed last year and the year before was this idea, and this was my very last remnant of that fabric that I loved so much. I don't even know where it came from, but this was my total inspiration for uh, you know, every project that I did was this cream with orange. And um, anyways, this is a stuffed toilet paper pumpkin. And I put this out every year and um, totally love this idea. And I'll be showing you this again this fall. Okay, let's see. And then one other thing I wanted to show you, this is not orange, but I think these could be really cute. Uh, just a few weeks ago, we made these, this book stack using the same canvas duck that I stenciled using Magnolia green ink. Um, and I did this um, stripes out of the Art Deco stencil set. This was the vintage, or retro flower is what it's called. It's really cute. And then this is the um, Victorian pattern that I love so much. So I'm thinking for fall that we definitely want to do something just like this or very similar, but with orange. So tell me, I've just been rambling and talking here, but I would love to know who, who are my orange lovers? Who are the people that love orange? Tell me in the comments if you're an orange lover. And I'm just trying to put my links here. Okay, just getting this. Okay. Peggy says she loves orange. 
I don't know, I like orange all year long, but I especially love it for fall and then for Easter time because I love doing that whole carrot theme for Easter is fun. So going into fall, I'm already starting to think about what kind of projects that we wanna do. And um, we're gonna do orange, of course, not everything orange, but some, some orange products, projects, the same idea. And I wanted to just take a second before we hop in to tell you that um, at Easter time, the orange ink ran out. They didn't have any more. So I'm just giving you a forewarning that if you think you're gonna wanna craft alongside me and do some of these projects that I'm for sure gonna be doing, that you might want to grab some of this pumpkin pie orange ink from Magnolia. And while you're there, you might also want to grab some of the orange chalk paste. It's called Orange Tiger. So I would definitely recommend those two things if you think that you're going to want to be crafting along with us. Okay, so before I came live, you know, as I was thinking about this video, I was thinking, hmm, how many people will be aggravated with me that I was talking about fall when at the time of this video, it's just the end of June, 2021. Uh, cause I don't know about you, but I don't like to go into, uh, Walmart or Target or anywhere else at the very start of summer and already see Christmas and fall decor and decorations and things to buy. Um, so I just want to get your creative juices flowing a little bit. Don't be aggravated with me just cause I'm thinking ahead a season. Um, and as far as my fall decorating goes. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I primarily do the fall theme of, you know, acorns and, and fallen leaves and pumpkins and that kind of thing. And I focus on the colors of fall. I don't tend to do a lot of, you know, ghosts and goblins and we will do some candy corn though, cause that's super cute. We'll do some stuffed candy corn. Um, so I focus my fall decorating, um, not really around the holiday of Halloween, but more just around the idea of fall. And we'll probably actually start making some of that stuff towards the end of July, just a few things. And then into August, just a few things. So. Okay, so I had this idea of making a table runner just like this one, only with fall leaves. And that is definitely something that we will be doing. So if you want to make this when I do this project, you're going to need a few yards. You might as well get three or four yards of the canvas duck fabric. It's, it's thick from Walmart or wherever you like in this creamy color. And then you're definitely going to want some ink. And I was thinking, we'll just fold this over so you don't see it, that it would be so super cute to do almost the exact same idea, but do it with fall leaves. And we can do them stuffed. So that's what I want to show you guys today. All right? So wouldn't that be just so super cute to have a table runner that had, you know, different kinds of fall leaves towards the end and then that ruffle and the fray. I think it would be super cute. Okay, so to get started on this project, what I did was I took my, this is called a damask stencil. It's from Magnolia. Magnolia stencils are green. It's awesome. It's reusable. It's not tied to any one particular season, so you can use it all year long. It's a great all over pattern. So I took that and a piece of my canvas. And I did iron it before I did this step so that I could get a real crisp impression. And I just laid my stencil on the top. 
and used a squeegee and some of the orange ink. And then I let it dry, which doesn't take that long. It took a couple of hours. I did it first thing this morning. And then I heat set it with a hot iron. And I have been playing with this one this morning. I, we're so technical here at DIY Dreaming um, that I sketched, I looked on the internet for cutouts of fall leaves. But you know, I'm having all these Facebook problems right now. I'm also having printer problems. Uh, I'm just not great with technology. So I couldn't print it. So I literally just, I, I have an iPad. I just squeezed that image up out so it was bigger. And I took a pencil and some computer paper. And I just traced around these shapes. So there's nothing magical about these shapes. You can do whatever kind of fall shapes you would like. And then I just cut it out. It's always easier to cut two things out at one time. So I basically would just put my leaf on, you know, however you want it, and put a piece of the plain, let me grab one so I can show you what I'm talking about. I'm just cutting this. And hopefully this is big enough. A piece of plain drop cloth, not drop cloth, I keep saying that, um, canvas duck fabric. And so it's too thick. It's got the printed side and the plain side. And I just pinned my little loop pattern on here. And I cut it out, which is super boring for you to watch. And I don't want you to watch me <laughs> cutting this out, but I did want to show you the idea. Okay, so that is basically how you can create your shape. And this was just one stencil, one impression of that stencil. So I'll be cutting this piece out and I'll have a leaf all ready to go. And that's what this is right here. Okay, I also did this one and it's a little bit further along. So let me show you that. And I need a something to do hot glue on. We're not sewing, not everybody has sewing machines. So I try almost always to just use hot glue whenever possible because almost everybody has access and knows how to work a hot glue gun. Okay, this pattern, this one right here, this leaf, I already cut it out and I've, I started to glue it. I left the side open. Come up and show you close. Are you guys excited about this idea? Um, I hope so. We won't fully implement it until it gets closer to fall, but I wanted to get you started thinking and I also wanted to encourage you to get your orange ink now while they have it. And I did pin a link, some links down here. Where do you get the ink and stencils? Okay, at the bottom of the page, there you'll see three orange hearts and down below that, you'll see a link to orange ink, a link to orange chalk paste, and a link to all of the Magnolia stencils in alphabetical order, just to make it easy for you. If you can't find that, let me know and I'd be glad to just answer the, your comment and get it to you. Anyway, so this is our, this one is a maple leaf and the other one is an oak leaf, I believe. Okay, so I glued almost all of it and then I started stuffing it just with some polyfill. And I'm just gonna close up the rest of it, this side. And this could go into a dough bowl as just a little, I like these little shapes in dough bowls with, you know, different things that you might have in there. It could do that. It could be a 3D little um, thing that we could put on either a banner or um, a table runner or a pillow. 
Did I show you my pillow from last year? I guess I didn't get that out. I have so many boxes of past crafts. It's not even funny. Um, okay, and I have one little opening right here. Okay, and I'll manipulate that polyfill a little bit and also I'll trim up the sides because when you glue it sometimes they shift just a little bit or you have some glue and some stuffing sticking out. Anyways, super cute, huh? Oh, and I did want to mention that we're going to do this one too, so stay with me. Um, I also wanted to mention that Magnolia has a lot of different all-over pattern stencils that would work for this project. So if you already have some of these, use what you have by all means. Um, this one is my favorite all-over pattern. This is the Victorian pattern stencil. And it looks yucky. It still works great, but it does look yucky because I used it a ton, a ton, ton, ton. I also made Easter eggs. I mean, I mean, I made so many different things with this. So this one is definitely, if you don't have any all over pattern stencils, I would suggest that one. And they do have that one in stock. Next up is the Mandela Lace. That's a great stencil. And this is my newer one that I've only used a few times. I like to show this one because people get a kick out of it. This is my very well-loved Mandela Lace stencil. Um, it's at least a year and a couple months old, and I've used it at least 30 or 40 times, and that's why it looks so terrible, but it still works. So, just in case you're wondering, are these green stencils reusable? Heck yeah, they are. They do get kind of cruddy looking, but nobody's looking at your stencil, they're looking at your project. So here's the difference between a, a newer, less loved Mandela Lace and one that's very well loved. That is, would be my second recommendation if you want to get an all over pattern. Um, my third would be, where is it? Oh, this one is hiding over here the damask pattern. All of these are super versatile. They're not tied to any specific season or any specific kind of a project. And you can use these in combination with words. You can create your own fabric using these and some ink. And then you can make all kinds of fun shapes and do all kinds of fun things with it. So I love this one too. And then, I don't know why I got out the queen bee, but I did for some reason. She looks terrible because I've used her a lot also. There is a, um, this is a buffalo check stencil. It's all over pattern. This is the retro flower one. That's an all over pattern. It's cute too. And then this is one that is called honeycomb. That is an all over pattern. I haven't used it yet, but I'm thinking this could be really cool. So I'm going to start thinking up what I could do with that. All right, let's go back to this project. And let's just start. I'm going to glue some of this down and then we'll stop it. Okay, let me put my pins back up here. What do you guys think? Do we like this idea of creating your own fabric? And having the, um, you know, this says fall without having it be a picture of trick-or-treating or a ghost or goblin or vampire or anything like that. It essentially, I just think this is a better way to do your seasons, to just give a nod to them and not, except for Christmas, well, and maybe Easter too. Um, so I just have started gluing the very top of it together. We're going to go all the way down one side. Also, if your children are not little ones anymore, mine are, one of mine is married and on his own completely. And the other one is, 
still at home, figuring himself, his life out, but doing great, and um, he's 20, so they aren't interested <laughs> in all that typical Halloween-y kind of stuff. So now I'm decorating for the seasons for me. Do you guys think that sounds totally selfish? I'm doing what I like and just getting going with this. I think this will be easier to stuff if I leave the opening on the side. rather than at the top or the bottom. Okay, so here's our little opening. Can you guys see that? And I'm just gonna grab some polyfill. I don't know how much we'll need, so I'll get a big handful of it. And yeah. I could use all these same stencils and do a summer theme with all of them, just using a different color of ink. Um, we could cut out surfboards, we could cut out flowers, we could cut out, I mean, all kinds of things that are summer themed. And we could make our own fabric just like we're doing for this, but do it for summer and then, Come Christmas, we can use all these same stencils to make things, do double fillers and banners and pillows and all kinds of things, um, just using Christmas shapes. So I think this is a, these are good investments in your crafting closet. Okay, I think that's enough stuffing. I just poked it in that hole. And now I'm going to Try to cram it back in there really good so that I can do my glue. I need a glue stick, of course. And I'm using my Sherbonder um, cool temperature, cool shot, uh, low temperature glue gun, and I'm using the actual Sherbonder glue sticks that go with it. It's nothing fancy. It is low temperature and you are going to get glue on your fingers when you're trying to put this, hold the fluff back in and glue your thing shut. So definitely don't use a hot, a hot, hot glue gun. Use a low temperature one for this kind of a project. Well darn. Okay, let's try one more time. And let me just tell you that, oh my word, this keeps falling out. When you get hot glue on your polyfill and then on your fingers, even if it's low temperature, that hurts. So that's why I'm being so careful to get my, what is the deal here? To get my um, polyfill pushed back in as far as I possibly can before I start gluing. And if some of it pokes out after the glue is dry and cooled down, I can just cut that off. Like, see that it is poking out right here, but I'll clean that up in just a minute. Let's do this last little bit here. So I think these fall shapes, we'll do pumpkins too. Um, we might do corn. 
Oh, we'll definitely be doing sunflowers. This idea, because I have some cute sunflower ideas. Because the sunflowers, obviously, we won't be using orange. We'll be using the yellow ink and the brown ink, if you want to grab some of that while you're there. Um, but there's lots, lots of fun things that you can do. I love decorating for fall. I still have my house decorated for summer, and I'm not switching it out yet. So this is the idea. I think they're cute in this damask pattern, but I think I would like them better cut out of this. This is the Victorian pattern. I do, because this is less um, of an organized pattern and this is more, you know, symmetrical. So if I was deciding between those two stencils, I would um, choose the um, Victorian one for sure. So again, just to sum this all up, um, I made these patterns off of something off the internet that was just a free printable maple leaf and oak leaf drawing. This is computer paper. Then I taped it on two pieces, the front and back of canvas duck cloth. Before I did that, I stenciled it using the stencils and this orange ink, which is for fabric. I heat set it. Not that it's ever gonna get washed, but I just want it to last forever. And then I cut it out, we glued it together, and we stuffed it. And we're gonna do things like table runners. This was Easter, but we'll be doing fall here at DIY Dreaming. We'll be doing things like pillows using the orange link ink and some of the stencils. And they will have their fall phrases and things coming back in. I'm not sure when, but before fall. Um, so here's another one. We, we will be making some banners, of course, because I love making banners. We'll be making probably some fabric banners for fall. And we'll probably be making some stuffed banners like this using this idea, and we'll be making some of these bowl fillers, which is like what we just did, and that's buried here on my desk. I don't know where it went. Anyways, I like these carrots. All right, well that is, pr oh, and we're also going to be doing um, book stacks in orange. So it's going to be a very orange fall, and I hope that I pretty much answered all of your questions. Now is a great time to get that orange ink if you think you're going to want to do any of the projects that we're going to be doing here. Last Easter, they did run out of it, and it was kind of a bummer. Um, I think there were so many people doing these carrots and things. Um, that they just couldn't keep up with the quantities. So I would grab some now. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you wanna look at the stencils, the ink or the chalk paste, I pinned a link right down here at the bottom of the page and it starts with three orange hearts and it'll take you directly where you wanna go. Um, let's see, what else do I wanna tell you? If you think you wanna see what I have coming up, do a this or this, or say something in the comments, check to make sure that you've liked and followed this page on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, take a second to subscribe to my YouTube channel and feel free to comment over on YouTube as well because I do read those comments and I will answer questions over there as well. Alrighty, you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm going to clear off my table just a tad bit and put some of these items here in case you want a screenshot um, and then I will say goodbye.
There's so many great projects that we can do. I can't wait to make the table runner for fall. I think that's plenty. Oh, and here is a candle garter. And I have a big disaster back here. Not too bad. Okay, if you want to screenshot anything so you can remember, feel free. Um, I will get pictures as well, and I'll put them here in the comments and also over um, just on Facebook. Patty says she loves the book covers too. Yeah, I think they'll be fabulous. Now, let me just say one thing. If you are not an orange lover, you could do all of these projects with black or brown ink, and it would communicate fall because of the shapes that you're using. So don't, if, you're, if you don't love orange, don't feel obliged to use that but you can take this, all these ideas and make them your own in your color schemes. If you're open to orange, let's try it. I'm gonna do a lot of projects with orange this fall, so I hope you'll join me, and um, I will see you guys again tomorrow, most likely. Okay, thanks.